talking about alignment and learning objectives. So, okay, so we're going to cover, you know, what is a learning objective? What does it mean to have measurable learning objectives? Um, what is alignment? When I'm talking about alignment, I'm using QM standards. So what does that mean? And um, then what about alignment between, you know, even module or week objectives versus course objectives? So what does that look like? So according to Quality Matters, again, I tend to use theirs as the guide. Um, learning objectives are kind of the, the foundation or the bedrock of the course. That's what you should always be striving to go towards. You're always building up towards them, which is kind of um, shown in this uh, image here where the course objectives are kind of a roof. So you're trying to get to there, but you need kind of the, the foundation and the things lead, that lead up to it. So you've got the module objectives or what you could put in your week objectives um, as the base, but then you use the assessments and the instructional materials and the activities and engagement and the course tools to build towards those course objectives. Um, so when you're thinking about learning objectives, you know, they should always be measurable. So um, they should clearly describe what the learners are going to gain from the instruction of the course. Uh, shouldn't be the language shouldn't be vague or contain jargon that they may not be aware of yet. Um, so they may, um, you know, if they've heard certain terms in previous courses that were required, you could go ahead and use that language. But if it's something that um, that they aren't aware of yet um, or haven't seen in some other um, situation, then I would hold off on um, using specific jargon. Um, but you also want to make sure that before they start the course, the learners are able to understand what they're going to walk away from, especially in an online course. They're going to look at that first page when they get in there and they're going to want to know what am I going to learn in this course? And um, so you want to make sure that your learning objectives are stated clearly and they're right in the forefront. But you also want to make sure that they're appropriate for the course level. So um, here they give a good um, image of um, Bloom's taxonomy and how each one kind of builds. So remembering, you know, recognizing facts and recalling facts, those are, you know, kind of the, the base. So it's like rote memorization, those are the base. Then you've got um, understanding what the facts mean. So that's kind of the next level, all the way up until you get to create, which is kind of, you know, the, the, the highest level of, of um, learning objectives that are typically out there. By making them measurable, you're providing students and uh, students a way to accurately accept the assess if they have accomplished those course goals. Um, and so word choice is also important when you're considering the learning goals of the course. I know you guys have heard this a million times in all of the assessment committee meeting or all of the assessment meetings that you guys have had over the last several years. Um, but using words like understand, those are not measurable. Um, yes, we, you know, in Bloom's taxonomy, we have a, one here that's talking about understanding, but we can't measure that very clearly. But if we said, um, you know, understand the American criminal justice system, we, while we understand what we're trying to do there, that's not clear and measurable. But if we said instead, um, uh, describe the history of the American uh, justice system, now, it, now it's measurable because we can have the students demonstrate in action um, and their understanding by writing an essay or something like that. So again, you wanna make sure that you follow Bloom's taxonomy and choose appropriate, measurable, and clear learning objectives um, to ensure that your students are able to accomplish the course learning goals um, by the end of the course. Um, so alignment, and again, this is a little bit different than probably education faculty would say what alignment is, um, very clear about that. I, I use the Quality Matters definition um, because that's what you know, what's best practice in an online course. So Quality Matters defines alignment as critical course elements working together to ensure that students achieve the desired learning outcomes. So using the course objectives as your guide, um, you should ensure that the material that you cover in the class is aligned to at least one of those course objectives. Each one doesn't have to be aligned to every one of them, but it should be aligned to at least one. Um, so, uh, for example, if you were teaching um, an interdisciplinary class based on the question, what is normal? Sorry, I, I was very 
you know, one I went with that I could think of right off the top of my head. So uh, an interdisciplinary course based on the question, what is normal? And your course objectives are the following. So investigate awareness and sensitivity to the issues of those faced with mental and emotional disorders. Define the term normal to determine what is an arbitrary definition and how it affects human behavior. Evaluate differences in themselves and others and examine different perspectives, writing styles and audiences of professional articles and fictional works. So what um, what types of learning activities or materi materials would you guys use, do you think, uh, to, um, to reach some of these goals? So the first one, what might you do you know, to investigate awareness and sensitivity to the issues. And I'm asking, I'm not. <laughs> well, first, I guess I would start out by reading some, some stories about people's personal experiences. Mm -hmm. And maybe even, this would be kind of advanced, but maybe even um, try some interviews with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, if they do interviews and do some type of write-up around that and they re do some reading and materials to prep themselves, um, you know, to, to investigate it, I think that would be a really great um, a great way to meet that objective and using learning materials and activities um, to, get them, to get them to that point. Um, Paul, did you have anything or did... Yeah, no, I mean, just the things mentioned in the last bullet point there, especially the book that professional articles and fictional works I think would be useful to go together yeah so making sure that your readings are you know kind of align, uh, aligning and giving those different perspectives mm -hmm. um, and again professional articles so that they can you know since we're having that as part of the goal they can see all of that what about um, defining the term normal um, that particular goal what what could we do there well both both kind of technical definitions from maybe different disciplines, um, but then also exploring kind of popular notions of that or how it's reflected and how people um, act, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the evaluate one. I mean, we sort of, you know, again, some of these can kind of go together, right, with the, the examining the different perspectives, you know, that if you provide them the opportunities to evaluate, you know, those differences thinking about themselves or others, um, you know, so maybe they write an essay or something. Maybe they could draw a diagram of themselves and some others and mm -hmm. put bullet points as to how I'm different in my thinking, in my heart, in my beliefs. Exactly. So, yeah, so there's a bunch of different ways that you could approach it. So there's really like no set, you know, you only can do this with whatever, you know, your learning goals are. You can find things that fit and they don't, again, not every activity needs to specifically relate to every single one of these. That's impossible. But you need to always have them aligned to at least one of them. So you should never be putting anything in there that you can't um, go back and say, this is, this is uh, related to, um, you know, the second objective of defining the term normal. Um, thankfully, that's a little broad. So almost anything can probably fit into that one, which is nice, but, um, but that's a good way to look at that. So then, yeah. there we go. Um, so examples that I um, put in here. Um, so for that first learning objective, students could read an article or a textbook chapter that focuses on the issues um, with mental and emotional disorders. Um, for the second objective, students write an essay about a definition of normal, which we took, we discussed. Um, for the third objective, learners could watch a video and then write and respond to their peers in a discussion forum about that video. So there's interaction, because again, even in an online course, you want to still have them interacting with each other. And then, you know, for the fourth one, learners could read and watch a variety of stories through YouTube and articles and those readings that we talked about to learn more about other perspectives. Okay, so um, course objectives and module objectives. So you wanna ensure that your module objectives also align to your course objectives. So you could use the same um, objectives in each week that you have as course objectives, 
But I would typically recommend um, choosing two or three um, new learning objectives for that week. So module or week objectives, because that will um, break it down. So you're breaking down those um, course learning objectives a little bit, um, which provides students a chance to, you know, break it apart and build it back up. So, um, so you want to make sure that what you're choosing, though, still aligns with your course level objectives. You don't want them to be, um, you know, if we're talking about the what is normal course, you don't want it to be, um, you know, uh, let's see, go run around the gym and dance on your head and see what you can do. Obviously, that's not going to relate to, pro well, I guess, see the problem with being what is normal is that that really works out. Um, but you want to find things that are going to align to those course level objectives. So, uh, so what, uh, for looking back at those uh, course level objectives, what kind of smaller um, level, uh, module level objectives could we break some of these into? Um, and again, you want them to still use that same kind of um, language of Bloom's tax taxonomy. You still want them to be something that's measurable in some way, shape, or form. Did they do the reading? Did they um, write an essay? That kind of stuff. So if we look at that first one, which is the investigate awareness and sensitivity um, learning objective, what could, if we wanted to break that apart a little bit, what, what could we um, create as a module objective one week? And then, and I guess I, I use the example here of if you're looking at adolescents with autism spectrum. So we narrow it down a little bit because that week's module is on, <clears throat> excuse me, adolescents with adolescents and autism. Yeah. Um, so reading a story, maybe a children's story that tries to address it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a children's story or a play. A play. A great play. Great play. A wonderful great. book like Curious Incident. There you go. It's a great play, too. It's a phenomenal play now. Yes, it is. I was like, got to see it in London. Thank you, Paul, for that. Mm -hmm. um, how about the second one? If we do define the term normal um, to determine, and we're still using that same adolescence with This it. is our module, too. So we've probably addressed this a little bit in week one. Maybe in week two, we're going to find more definitions for normal so that we can start comparing and contrasting what mm -hmm. other people think. Yeah, so maybe for this week, uh, what is, um, how might you could do something, uh, change the, the module objective to be something along the lines of um, define how adolescents with ASD might define the term normal and then you can have you know examples of writings or videos or anything that you could bring in to show them you know and demonstrate that so then again they could write a short essay they could do a discussion forum where they're making their own definitions and you know communicating with their peers um and then how about the third one with evaluating differences how about mutual interviews you put two people together and they interview themselves and they have the same set of questions that they can compare and contrast. Yeah. So, you know, you if you, you know, you're going to find two different normals right there. We know that because nobody has the same life experiences. So, you know, here's a great opportunity for them to learn. Thank you. That actually gives me an idea for my class that's coming up next week. Thank you. Um, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do in class. Um, and then how about the fourth one when we're talking about adolescence with, excuse me, ASD. So examining different perspectives. Well, maybe parents would have one perspective about a child with ASD. Maybe a doctor would have another perspective and write about it in a different way. Maybe a young person themselves would have a different perspective and their teacher might have a different perspective and their sister. Mm -hmm. So. You know, if you used short articles or short examples of all of these things that they have to read or watch, you know, in your online course, now you're hitting this particular course level objective and you could state, um, 
Um, in this one, um, you could say something like um, evaluate the three, you know, three or four different types of relationships with adolescents with ESD and how they might define normal or something along those lines. You could bring in, so you're looking at those different perspectives, but you're pulling it back into what you're also, you know, readings and that kind of stuff that you're doing in class. So then um, I put in some examples of some module level objectives that I um, have used in our course. Um, so for that same one with ASD and adolescence, um, uh, one of them we made to be identify what issues a person with ASD might experience during their adolescence. So are they bullied, that kind of stuff. So there's, uh, we can use readings and um, have them do a discussion forum. So that aligns to the first objective. Um, the second is explain what normal might mean to an individual with ASD and how that compares to your normal. So comparing it to themselves. And that one actually hits both the course levels uh, objectives two and three. So those middle ones, that actually hits both of those. And then um, for the third, you could do examine the differences in perspectives of DJ Savarese and Jesse Saperstein's adolescent years experience. So there, you know, so there's two people who have lived through adolescence in different ways. And so what are their perspectives um, and how can they compare? And that one aligns then to that course level objective, um, the fourth one. I would normally say if, when you're doing an online course, and I'll show this in a second, um, in when you write out like the course learning objective, the, um, the module learning objectives and any assignments or readings that you want them to do, I would identify um, what each of those activities aligns to. So like the course you see here, I have got, I've got for the course learning objectives. So these are the module learning objectives, but afterwards I say in parentheses, course learning objective or CLO one. Um, and the second one, CLO two and three. Okay, you would actually put that in your Moodle site after every little assignment so they know how what you yes, want so them to do. So where it aligns to, so if you wanted to say, I don't understand how this relates to anything, you can quickly point out and say, you know, here's, here's exactly how it relates. And most of the time they're not questioning it, but this way they're good to um, uh, be able to see that. So, okay. One quick note that we do have our next online boot camp workshop, November 3rd. Um, it'll be about organizing and uh, laying out your course. Let me. Go over here and bring up. Okay, so here I started to build out a little bit that theater 150 course that we um, are kind of using as the example as we go throughout. So um, to start, um, right now, I'm gonna start at the top and kind of work our way down. So at the, stop, at the top, and we're working on creating um, a new template for Moodle that everybody can use that will have some of this information like right at the start um, that students have resources to, that kind of stuff. So we're working on that, but that won't be implemented until at least summer. Um, but it'll be something like this where you'll have like a getting started section that, you know, has the basics of, you know, final course evaluation is always sitting there like it is now, a spot to put your syllabus, um, a course map. So this is a great way to also show students. And I almost always encourage, especially if you're doing an online course, um, creating a course map. So let me open that up. Because um, this shows, uh, starts to break it down. There it is. So this starts to break it down. So we have, um, this right now is just an example of the I have a iPad course because I haven't built out entirely the, the theater one quite yet. But um, in that course, you know, we put the course level objective. And then we start identifying what module objectives fall into that particular um, course level objective. So in this case, there's three module objectives that align to the first one, to the first, first learning objective. Then uh, you put in what assessments or graded assignments fall under that first one. Assignments, same thing. And so instructional materials. So are they watching videos? Um, and then the learner activities and learner interaction. Again, like discussion forums, that kind of stuff is really um, 
you want to promote in an online course. And then what tools are you using? So in this case, Moodle, Apple Teacher website was being used, um, the iPad, Zoom, that kind of stuff. So in this particular course, we're looking at you know how to use the iPad. And this, um, uh, then we go down to the second one. And you see that for that one, we've identified even more module objectives, assessments, so on and so forth. Um, so course maps are really helpful. And sometimes they help you kind of plan out what you're looking to do too. Um, so if you want to just, you know, either start here or with the syllabus is always a good starting point like we talked about before. There's I can what, see that they'd be helpful for the teacher in figuring out assignments and making sure you have a nice range of different activities and that all your goals are covered. Mm -hmm. Do the students find them helpful? I have been in classes that have had them that are fully online and being able to just go and refer to it to see, okay, did I miss anything? You know, oh, we're oh, you talked about that. Is that in this week? Oh, no, we're okay. Okay, good. Um, so I found them, I have always found them helpful to just kind of give me a, a kind of a guideline of how things are, you know, aligning to what I'm supposed to be learning in the end of the whole thing. So, um, I mean, I'm sure some, there are plenty of students who would probably won't even look at them, but in the end, I think it's good practice to have it both for yourself. And again, there are students who will look at it and maybe it's just because I'm weird and like this kind of stuff. That's why I'm looking at it. I don't know. Um, and then, uh, so if I go back over to that theater course, we've got the, um, so that was the course map, the general technology stuff, the stuff that we already have at the bottom of the, um, Moodle site as it is right now. So that just, we're planning to just kind of move that up a little bit to make it faster and easier. And actually some of this will be on the side um, panel. So then, you know, the next section, do, talking about the course description, structure, and goals. So pull that language straight from the syllabus that we, you know, use and put in the course description, how you're going to structure the course. So, you know, in this particular one with the theater one, examining historical plays. Um, and, uh, you know, so starting with Oedipus Rex, going up to Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, because I ran up to that one in my, when I taught this course, I was like, I like it, it's going. Um, and then, uh, you know, what students will be expected to do being online. I, I still need to tweak some of this, I think, for this particular course, but it's, you know, getting started, it's there, I can always tweak later. And then- Now that stuff is all on your syllabus too. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I can pull it directly from there. Do you think it's kind of good to break it out and put it on here again? Yeah, because um, students, as much as we push them to read the syllabus and do all the things with the syllabus, they still, we, we want to make it as easy as possible for them to see it. And so putting this right up front. Now, there's a couple different ways we could do this. Like if we didn't want to take this whole section, you know, so they have to continue to scroll all the way down every single time. We could take this information and create a page um, so it's shorter so that you click on the link and it takes you in. But I normally think that adding an extra layer of a clicking is going to make them less likely to look it over. Whereas this, as they start the course, they're kind of um, looking through it and then they can start jumping down when they're feeling more comfortable with it. And there, of course, are, you know, we put in those course goals and objectives, just like they are in the syllabus. Um, and then um, what I did is I uh, took those and um, I'm just trying to remember how, why I did this. Uh, let's see. So recognizing the conventions, investigating and examining. Um, I started to break it down a little bit more for them um, just to see um, more specifically what they might do. And then as in any good course, and we'll talk about the course layout and all of that in the next one, but introductions. Um, you know, here, here's the introduction, how you want to communicate to them. These kinds of things are important. But if we jump down to that week one, I haven't done any of the other weeks yet, but I started with week one. Um, so here, you know, I, I give a description of what we're going to do. Um, so the questions we might examine. So what is theater? Does theater still matter? Um, and then, you know, anything that they might be coming up and doing. But the learning objectives here are just for that week. So this is the module level objective here. And normally what I do is each week, you know, each one will be like 1.1, week two will be 2.1, 2.2. So I just, you know, based on the week, 
um, to make the module objectives easier to identify. And um, so in this case, um, you know, so for my module objectives here, um, identify what theater is and why it matters. And here, like we talked about, you see where I put, you know, CLOs three and four. So that goes back up to those course level objectives um, that are the three and four. The next one is recognizing the social functions and roles of theater. And those um, course learning objectives are one and two. So they can go up and see if they wanted to compare and see what those are. They can go up and find those pretty quickly. And same with the uh, third one, you know, one and four. I would say course level objective wise or module level objective wise, no more than two to four at the high end. You don't need a million of them. Um, normally about two to three is a good, um, kind of a good base to have. So they've got enough there that they can work with and there's, you know, things that they're clearly going to do that are related, but it's also a little bit, um, uh, there's not as many of them. Um, I've seen some courses through Quality Matters where they've got 30 module objectives because they pulled from a textbook. And it is insane to try and figure out what's going on in that. So I would say, keep it simple. You know, break down what you're going to do that week into, you know. Okay, right? Brittany, so this is what you want them to watch and read for this one week, this this week this, one. This next one? The next yeah, one. yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. And um, they do that all on their own because this is an online course and they're, they do it. Mm -hmm. And then they come back to you on Zoom and, or how do you know they've done it? So there's a couple different ways that, you know, we could um, structure this. And I, what I started to put down here and I, you know, there's things I may still want to be tweaking and adding or changing here, but we want them to introduce themselves. You always want to try and do that in an online format because you know, make sure you know who they are and what their interests are. But there's a week one discussion forum. So here I would probably give them a prompt related to something in those um, two chapters or in those videos that they see or comparing some of that information to each other. And then um, in this case, I was thinking, you know, doing a Nearpod lesson that they can do asynchronously on their own. But that information gets stored in Nearpod so I can see that they went through and did it. Um, you know, the other piece for things like readings, you could do, you know, small quizzes, reading quizzes, that kind of stuff is another option. Um, I normally stick to a lot of, most of the time, I tend to stick to discussion forums or Nearpod lessons because I find those, students find those more engaging and less stressful. Quizzes, qu the word quiz or exam always like freaks people out. And I feel like I can get, a better sense of what they've actually pulled from it and if they've really truly read this way you know in a discussion forum or in a nearpod lesson then i could just having them do a multiple choice quiz or something that would be um a little bit harder to tell and then right. in the but are these go ahead there are there points for each mm -hmm. form okay yep yeah so they would know what they what the point value is for everything yep so um yeah, so here um, for this one, for example, let me turn editing on. And I, I might say in this one, I put, I put the CLOs and MLOs on like every section of everything. I might say, put it up here, but then down here where you've got the names of the assignments, you know, and the actual assignments, I probably wouldn't put them on. I put them in here for now, but I think that makes it too, that takes it too far. Whereas having it up here in this first section is helpful. I don't think you necessarily need it again. But if we go into, um, let's look at this week one. So this week one discussion forum um, for, I normally do in a discussion forum, the sum of ratings, and they can get 10 points for that um, particular discussion forum. So they would get, they have to do one original post, which is worth six points, and then two responses to peers. And I normally give like, you know, your responses need to be substantive and they should be probably about 50 words or more. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just a, I liked it. It was good, as Rick always said. Um, so this is a, uh, if, I, if you give those guidelines in the description, it makes it clearer for them um, to, to know what, what is expected of them. Um, but you, so you say like the first, your original post needs to be 150 words or so. 
Um, and if they typically, if they're close to that and it looks like they've really read, they're going to get the full points. Um, and then if they've done the responses and put in substantive responsive, not responses, not just a three word um, response, they'll get the two points for your, for those. So, um, so this is how I typically do it. And then I put in, in Moodle here, I put it in the discussion forums because I've got discussion forums weighted differently than some of the other types of assignments in here. Um, so then if we go back out here, I think I put, did I put it in a, let me see if I put in a prompt on this one yet. I did not put in a prompt on this one yet. Um, so there would be a prompt when they clicked on that um, that may talk about, uh, you know, what I try to do in a lot of these is have them talk about some of their experiences. You know, how can they relate it to things they've seen or things they've done? Have they been to a play? Did they see this happening? Can they see, you know, are they from a different culture? Can they talk about, you know, how that's impacting their view of what they're reading? Um, those are the kinds of things I try to, to bring in so that, again, the more you can make them relate to it, the more likely they're going to continue to be engaged with it. And then they had to do the, uh, the other thing they had to do, I haven't put the Nearpod lesson in here yet, but the script ideas, they had to submit their first, or their, their uh, the scripts that they were considering for their project that goes all the way through the course, which is the critical play analysis one. Um, and so for that one, um, they had to submit three titles of plays. They had to do a little bit of research, find three plays that they might want to explore, um, putting their first choice as number one, and then two other options. And, you know, honestly, most of the time, they all get their first choice, because most of them don't choose. There's enough plays out there that they don't choose the same. But I always say, put three just in case somebody decides that they are going to do two, and we're not doing the exact same thing over and over again. Um, so that's kind of, you know, just kind of how the, you know, this week is is set up. I haven't done, uh, and there's, you know, more that will keep being played with and tweaked. You know, two, I've, I've outlined the the topic areas right now, um, from, based on what we had. Um, and then the, the, you know, I started to put in some of the assignments, but they're not fleshed out by any stretch. So right now they're just like, okay, and this is happening in week two. Okay, it's in there. Um, but this one, this first one, I tried to build out as much as I could um, to give an example. So again, for learning objectives and course level, or so for module objectives and course level objectives, the module objectives should still be measurable, still be um, um, easily, no, you know, not contain jargon, easily read by even non-English speakers for the most part, but they still need to align up to those course level objectives. So if you can make, if you can say, yes, identifying what theater is and why it matters aligns to, I said that one aligns to, which one, three and four? So that one aligns to examine the impact of theater and appreciate and become knowledgeable, active and reflective participants. We can make, we can say that that particular module objective would meet those. Um, so it's, it's basically module objectives are taking the larger picture and breaking it down into sub um, subsections for um, each week or each module, however you want to structure it. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Are there questions or? No, we interrupted you kind of as we went for that <laughs> question. <laughs> well, and that's what, I, that's what I want you to do. So we're good. Um, so I'm like, that's really all I had for today. Um, that's great. That's fine. And I'll keep, and I'm going to keep building this out so that um, next time we come together, you'll see more of the layout since we're talking about those, that kind of stuff next, that's going to be built out so you can see what happens when we do that um, by that point. Mm -hmm. Great. That sounds great. So it seems like a, a fair amount of this is just um, laying out the objectives for all the parts and kind of having it in multiple places, making sure mm -hmm. it's all clear. Yeah, it's good practice to put things in, I typically say multiple places, both in the syllabus and just within the course. Um, primarily because it, it students can, are like more likely to read it if they see it in one spot or the other. We don't always know which one they're going to look at because it's always questionable sometimes, but they're more likely if they're at least looking at week one, they're going to come down here and they're going to see this first part and they're going to be like, I need to know what I'm doing this week. 
oh, okay, so here we're talking about these questions. Here's what I'm going to have to do. There those learning objectives. What's required of me through this module? And then the information so they have access to it from there. Um, so, yeah, so it's just making sure that it's as fair as possible for them. Reiteration is never a bad thing. No, the course mapping, I really like that. Too. Yeah, I, I found it really helpful. I did that, actually use that when I was even just doing my um, FYEN course. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I have to think through this some more since that was the first time I was going to be teaching one. And by putting stuff into the course map, I was like, yes, this can align back to this. We're good. Okay. We're, you know, we're reaching this question and we're solving that by doing this. You know, thankfully that one's a little more prescribed. So it was, I, I at least knew the types of assignments I had to do. Um, but by outlining it for myself a little bit more, it was easier to make those connections. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, as always, if you have questions or issues, let me know. And I'll be contacting you for some help, Paul, too, with my honors class. I really haven't gone any further with my syllabus yet, but I have my book. And so that is my next thing to really get on that. And I'll give you what I have for your Thanks. opinions. Yeah, we have time. Man. I have 18 students and a, and a wait list of four. Wow. I'm glad of that. but. You know, we actually need big space for everybody, and everybody needs access to a sewing machine. So I just bought three more used machines, but they're used for Neiman, so enough said. Wow. <laughs> They'll be good, in yeah. other words. Yeah, that would be good. So, all right. Bye, everybody. All right. Have a good one, you guys.